I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something, even this conversation alone can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kelly, and we are back with another video. If you are new to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. If you are into true crime stories, news, and political commentary, I think you will enjoy the channel, and I would appreciate it very much. Whatever you can do, like the video, give us a comment. It really does help me out a lot, and I very much appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're not new to the channel, you're a returning listener or subscriber, thank you so much for being a friend, guys. That means a lot to me, and I really do appreciate y'all so much as well. So, I wanted to jump on here, guys. This video is going to be relatively quick. I wanted to give a quick update on the um, state senator, Fred Mills, the rhino, big pharma shill who wants to trans your kids, and just kind of let you guys know, um, you know, what, what has been going on, because I do have an update to this story. We talked about this in uh, one of my last videos. I gave you guys the full rundown on the bill and everything like that, and... Um, I actually had a, I finally was able to get in touch with his office and I had a phone call with his uh, assistant or whoever, his spokeswoman. And so I wanted to play that call for you guys here today. I'm going to debunk some of what she said, give a little bit of, um, you know, just push back on that because everything, everything that was uh, released as his so-called statement was utter bullshit and word salad. And I was able to actually very easily go through and find um, proof to counter his little narrative that he tells himself so he can sleep better at night, uh, knowing that he's pushing this tea agenda. So let's get into it, guys. Without further ado, uh, I'm going to play the phone call for you guys, and then we're going to go through and debunk everything. Okay, so here we go wrote it down, so he said, in an interview with Channel 10, if you'd like to share this with anybody, please do. So that's, uh, if uh, you allow me, I can read you what he said. Okay, sure, go ahead. Okay, he says, okay, if you want to send this to anyone, here's my position. As you all know by now, this week in Baton Rouge, I cast a deciding vote on a con controversial bill that has created an immense amount of social media hostility. While the topic of transgender rights is immensely complicated and socially polarizing, the bill before me was not. The bill does three main things. Prevents physicians and psychologists who are treating children in a gender crisis from utilization of appropriate and approved uh, puberty blockers and hormone replacements. Number two, prevent gender reassignment surgical procedures on children. And three, makes children currently stabilized on puberty blockers or hormone, hormone replacement medication stop taking them. After more than a two-hour debate, I relied on the science data before me to cast my vote. A study specific to Louisiana children found that only 14% of children in a gender crisis were considered appropriate candidates for puberty blockers or hormone replacements with that zero children in Louisiana had ever had a gender reassignment surgical procedure. So nobody in Louisiana ever had that. And medical experts testified that taking away puberty blockers or hormone replacements that a child is stabilized on could have very grave con consequences. As I've always done in my 16 years as a legislator, I relied on science and data and not political or social pressure. I polarized the value of the physician's patient relationship, but I, but I put my trust that the physicians in Louisiana know better than I do regarding how to treat these children, and I decided that this is such a small, unique subset of the medical needs of the entire population that I should not take away approved and appropriate medical options. Okay, um, I, I appreciate that statement, um, and I understand that you're just relaying the message, but uh, I just, I do have a few concerns because I understand that this is his last year in office, and uh, I understand he's also um, a pharmacist, 
and it just seems like he has vested interests and he has uh, other other things that might have caused him to vote this way. And I'm just wondering, um, you know, just because he's giving all these reasons and he says that there's been no uh, gender reassignment surgeries for children in Louisiana, we still would remain the only state in the South that would allow this sort of thing. So we're going to become uh, like basically a, a haven, safe haven for people to come here and, and do these mutilating surgeries on children or get these hormones that actually are, they, they are detrimental to kids. He, he can say that they're not, but he has a, you know, a vested interest as a pharmacist to sell people drugs. So they are harmful to kids. So I just, I'm just kind of concerned because okay. he's going to be out of office soon. I understand that. And I think that it's very unfair to his constituents to have, to have voted down this legislation in his last year instead of uh, taking this more seriously, the concerns of all of his constituents. So, I mean, I hear, I hear you. I understand. So, is there any other sort of, um, you know, um, I don't know, is there any other avenue for, for those of us who are concerned about this vote and that feel like we're not being represented by him at this point? Well, they can. Um, uh, this was at a committee meeting. This was at a committee meeting that he broke a tie vote, that he broke as chairman, he broke the tie vote. When is his actual official last day in office? Oh, not until January of next year. Is okay. there an election come October, and then if there's a runoff, I don't know how many candidates are, are, are running for his position uh -huh. because he's term limited. Yes. Him and, okay. I mean, it's up to the senators that they want to bring it back up and, and vote all together, and a lot of people are asking for that, and a lot of people are asking right, for right. it to be well, brought to the Senate floor as a as to vote as a whole. Yeah. Right. Well, because that can happen. I'm sure at this point he knows that people are very unhappy with him. He knows, and he has a lot of a lot of positive. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, a lot of positive uh, um, emails and phone calls too from um, uh, people that want to give drugs to their kids and change their kids' genders. School psychologists. School yeah, ma'am. <laughs> Um, yeah, stuff like that. I understand that, but those, the, I mean, like, honestly, this is kids. They should not be able to give themselves hormones that are damaging to their young bodies before the age of 18. That's absolutely ridiculous. And he should change his uh, affiliation back to Democrat if that's how he feels. So uh, I just think that's unfair for him to be represented, be trying to represent uh, Republican and conservative values if that's how he's going to vote. I think that's absolutely ridiculous and very deceiving. So... And I'm sure all the people who are praising him are all Democrats, so. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't take it as a, as a political thing. Well, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a vote that happened in the Senate, so it is political. I mean, it's... it's... it's that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't take that. Like, I don't know when they, when they come in for again, they, should, they don't tell me if they for, you know, they're Republican or that they are, you know, Democrat. I don't know. Well, I don't know that, you know. Okay. I understand that. Yes, ma'am. Um... Okay, well, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, give him, you know, the message that I am one of his constituents. I live in, you know, in Lafayette, Louisiana, I'm part of his district, and, um, you know, we, myself and others are very unhappy with him, and we will be following this and making sure that, you know, we're represented. It's not fair for us to have... And your first name was Kelly? Kelly. Well, thank you, Kelly, for calling. It was nice talking to you, and I'll, I'll let him know. I promise yes. you I'll let him know. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, guys, so yeah, as you can see from that call, um, just, I mean, utter bullshit, honestly. Everything that she was saying, uh, she was reading off of a, a written statement, first of all, that he had uh, time to actually sit there and um, write up, you know, your time to think about this, because he was getting a lot of pushback, and he still is. She tried to write it off as, like, saying, oh, well, he's getting a lot of support, too. Yeah, he's a registered Republican who's getting a lot of support from leftist Democrats. So tell me how that actually serves anyone. And I'm sure a lot of the people who are actually praising him or giving him compliments aren't even people who live in his district or are his constituents. So I have a lot of issues with what she said. And, you know, he couldn't even bother to make an appearance on the actual news. He just released a statement to the local news affiliate here. And I just think he's such a coward. Um, actually, this is a, a lovely photo of the man himself, Fred Mills. As we all know, he is uh, an enjoyer of woman face and dressing in drag 
uh, to promote his uh, business, which I don't know what one has to do with the other. I, again, I'll say it before. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't know why you couldn't find a real woman um, to be in your commercial to promote your business. I, I guess it's just one of those autogynephilia type situations where you must enjoy it. I don't know. You must enjoy putting on uh, pr- prosthetic breasts and lipstick and a wig and, uh, you know, running around running around your office or wherever it is that you shoot this uh, weird shit and somehow it gets you off. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're into, Fred Mills, but it, it seems like a whole lot of freak shit, okay? So anyways, I wanted to go through and um, actually cite and read over with you guys some of the uh, so-called, you know, research that he said actually um, determined his vote. So let's get into... Uh, First, here's his, again, if you guys live in Louisiana or even if you just want to give him a call, I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. Here's all of his uh, contact information and all of that. And let's get into this here. So this is uh, this is the response to H.R. 158 of the 2020 reg- 2022 regular session uh, prepared by the Louisiana Department of Health. So this was in large part the study that was cited as uh, his reasons for um, thinking that it's okay to give kids uh, hormones and and transing kids and giving them all these, uh, you know, um, puberty blockers and these dangerous drugs, which he said uh, via his assistant that he thinks are the uh, safe and legitimate response to kids who are mentally ill with gender dysphoria or just even a part of this social contagion that is this new wave of gender dysphoria in young kids especially young girls so i wanted to just read over this with you guys because i kind of lightly touched on this in my last video i just want to assert it again here this study which he said and he cited several times as well there's been absolutely no kids who have gotten gender affirming uh, surgery in louisiana which you know it matches with this with this here study you know this study backs that claim up but if we as we'll go on to see this study is only looking at louisiana medicaid patients okay which is a small minority of people. So let's go on to read some of these things. So the amount of Medicaid funds used to cover the cost of gender reassignment procedures in this state. So approximately $3,439.04 per enrollee receiving a chemical procedure in 2021, $196,000. I'm sorry, 196,250 total for the 57 enrollees who received treatment. And you might think that that's not a lot. Um, Come check out the roads in Louisiana. Come check out the crumbling bridges that we have. We have a bridge that is quite literally on the verge of collapse in in Lake Charles, the I-10 bridge. It's like famous for being one of the oldest and one of the most like uh, (laughs) decrepit bridges. I mean, we're just, we have issues coming out the wazoo and instead of putting this almost two hundred thousand dollars that medicaid is spending towards transing louisiana's kids via chemicals and and medical solutions we could have put that money towards maybe helping those kids maybe getting them into uh, better schools maybe getting them into um psychological programs or uh treatment facilities or something like that no but let's give them drugs so cool And uh, this one, number 10, a review of a minor's mental and cognitive capacity to consent to gender reassignment procedures. So this was important. In Louisiana, a minor can consent to medical care in general without the consent of a parent or guardian. Wow. Under the mature minor doctrine, a minor's age, maturity, and cognitive abilities are weighed when making a judicial determination of whether a minority who is otherwise legally incompetent is sufficiently mature to consent to their own medical care the american academy of pediatrics encourages the involvement of children beginning at age seven with increasing involvement determined by age including for those in the transgender population so according to the uh american academy of pediatrics a seven-year-old should have a say in his his own medical procedures and his own medical future and and things of that nature well yeah great uh you're doing you're doing great um aap so again louisiana data is based on medicaid enrolled minors only okay this is not people who are seeking privately funded care okay so the 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 claim that he made that 
there are zero children, minors, who have received uh, gender-affirming care is a lie, it's dishonest, and it's misleading. And I will show you more data to back that up as well. Okay. Exact counts of Louisiana's minors who are diagnosed with gender dysphoria or who receive physical or behavioral health intervention interventions for gender dysphoria are difficult to track. However, because patients and their providers may use multiple health systems, insurance carries, and or self-pay services. Okay? Therefore, for the purposes of this report, estimates of the numbers of minors and providers receiving or providing care related to gender dysphoria were limited to Louisiana Medicaid members for whom administrative data is available. Okay? So, yeah. Fred, you could you could have been a little more specific and actually uh, admitted to what it was that you were re referencing and, and understanding that a lot of these kids who are Medicaid are poor kids. And as this study goes on to say, uh, a lot of the kids who receive gender affirming, what they call gender affirming surgery or just, you know, mutilation is what I call it, um, are like wealthier white children from a more uh, prominent like family structure. So most of those kids are probably paying through private insurance or even out of pocket. So really, you don't know what the F you're talking about. Okay? Fred, Freddy. <sighs> so annoying. Okay. Moving on. Because I don't want to make this too long, guys, but I, is, I did just want to, like, come and counter his, everything that that woman told me because it's, it was ridiculous. And I just thought it was so stupid for her to just sit there and read that out to me and think that that was going to be like, okay, fine. Yeah, oh, well, oh, as long as he said that. Okay, ma'am, as long as you have a written statement from him, then I guess I'll just go away. I'll just, I'll just you know, squelch my uh, concerns and complaints. Okay, you got me there, ma'am. <laughs> no. So this table I thought was very interesting as well because here they're saying the quiet part out loud uh, about mental health counseling and minors' experience experience gender dysphoria and thought this column here was the most interesting and it was talking about enrollees with gender dysphoria and suicidal ideation okay so from 10 to 14 age bracket 25 of the 67 enrollees with gender dysphoria had suicidal ideation 36 had depression of the age bracket 15 to 17, 76 enrollees, 18 had suicidal ideation, 32 had depression. So that is out of a total of, for everybody, 154, 43. So that is about what? About a third, a little bit under a third of the kids who claimed they had gender dysphoria also had suicidal ideations. That is scary and that it should be an alarming data point for anyone, okay? And we should be asking questions about that. So why then are we so quick to give children, minors, who are claiming to be gender dysphoric and with whom a third have either uh, suicidal ideations or this number, which is a little bit under half, 44.8% have depression. We're going to pump them full of medication and hormones and chemicals. Make it make sense. And that's just from 2017, okay? So it goes up from there. In 2018, in the age group 10 to 14, 78 enrollees, 35, which is 44.9% had suicidal ideations. 69% had depression. Okay, in 2019, 117 enrollees, 49, which is 41.9% had suicidal ideations. 61.5% had depression. 2020, 134 enrollees, 62, which is 46.3%, had suicidal ideation, 85, or 63.4% had depression. And in 2021, and you guys notice this number increasing ever more, ever more, ever more, and then we have a huge spike from 2020 to 2021 from 134 enrollees in the age group of 10 to 14, okay, 10 years old, guys, 10 years old, claiming that they are the wrong the wrong sex, okay? 10 to 14 years old. It went from 134 children in this state to 269. And then less than 10 years old. I mean, that number kind of stayed stagnant a bit, but like 10, less than 10. So we have nine-year-old, eight-year-old, seven-year-olds 
who are claiming to be gender dysphoric. So great. I mean, this data is scary to me. I don't, I don't see how somebody can look at this and think, oh, yeah, this is this is fine. I guess, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let them take drugs. Fuck it. Um, so, again, 2021, in the age bracket, 10 to 14, 269 enrollees. And that is more than the 15 to 17 age bracket. I mean, that's this is a scary number to me right here. This is, like, very alarming. And um, out of the 269, 49%, 132 kids had suicidal ideations in that, in that age group, okay? 10 to 14-year-old had suicidal ideations and gender dysphoria. Hmm, is there a link there? I don't know. And then 184 or 68.4% had depression. Ten, imagine you're a 10 to 14-year-old child being depressed with suicidal ideation and thinking that they're the wrong sex. And your first thought would be to go and pump them full of hormones or chemicals or chop their breasts off. I mean, hello, Earth to Matilda. Earth to Matilda. You know what? Can we just cut it out with all the earth too? I mean, am I, am I crazy? Am I crazy? So yeah, very um, alarming data in my opinion. I don't know. You guys tell me though. It, it, does it alarm you? Does it set off any alarm bells in your head? So I want to read a few more sections of this and then we'll move on. The majority of participants in the studies were white of higher socio socioeconomic backgrounds and many studies with larger sample sizes or longitudinal data were conducted in European countries with national health care systems. The included studies are such as such are unlikely to represent the transgender and diverse gender diverse population of youth in the U S yeah. Great. Uh, so relevant outcomes included suicidality, body image, anxiety, and depression. And that is, uh, uh, minors who have undergone gender reassignment procedures. Well, I thought there were none. So wh what are you referencing, study? Mm, weird. And there are obviously, um, the sources are at the bottom of this study, but you guys can look this up if you want to. Uh, three individual studies not included in the SRs reported uh, psychological outcomes after any hormone treatment compared to a group of transgender or gender diverse youth not receiving treatment, levels of depression, uh, 95% confidence intervals and self-harm or suicide thoughts improved while severe anxiety did not. So this is showing, this is basically saying that some of these things, uh, you know, depression and, and, uh, you know, whatever, like confidence and all this shit, like might've improved, but anxiety itself did not. So that, that should also tell you something, you know, if a child is so depressed at age 10 years old and they say that they're a different gender, like, my last thought would be to get them to a gender clinic and trans that child. I mean, like, it seems so asinine and so wrong. And a lot of these kids still have the same feelings of being anxious or, or feeling like something's wrong with them. It's called going through growing pains and it's called growing up and it's called feeling awkward. So I don't know where people have lost their sense of reality and their sense of like, oh, this is normal for kids to just, you know, feel a little weird at this age. Like, they're not really knowing what's going on. They can say one thing, but, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, ideas that they have are coming from also their, their peers in school. And, you know, maybe I should stop for a second and, and think that, like, maybe my child doesn't know what's right for them. Maybe I know what's right for them. So, I don't know. I don't know where that whole uh, mindset went, but I would like for us to regain some of our, uh, some of our goddamn uh, common sense, if we could. So, again, uh, these are f physical and medical outcomes of minors who have undergone gender reassignment procedures regarding adverse events. Studies reported on bone density alterations, but not fractures. Oh, whew, thank God, no fractures. Whew, it's only their bone density. You know, like these, um, these boys who are taking estrogen, estrogen does severe damage to your bone structures. And so same thing with women. Like that's what we're finding for all of these kids who are taking these hormones and these chemicals at such young ages, puberty blockers and all the sort is that their bone structures are being, their endocrine systems are being severely damaged by this. And it's, it's really very alarming to me that people just bypass this or look the other way uh, as to why he felt the need to vote the way that he did. It was all bullshit, in my opinion. Everything that he said, citing this study, citing the quote-unquote professionals that supposedly came and testified before him, again, 
those people, those doctors, those, uh, you know, the, the uh, clinical psychologists and all these people who are getting rich off the backs of these, of taking advantage of these kids, their opinions mean nothing to me. And for him to say that, like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I, I listen to science. I don't make this a political decision. Well, guess what? You're a damn politician, you little twat. You are not a scientist, okay? If you want to be a scientist, go back to your little pharmacy and be a damn scientist. You're a politician, so guess what you answer to? You don't answer to science. You answer to your constituents who voted you in to that seat. You freaking idiot. That just pissed me off. Like, listening back to the phone call, I wish I had thought of that whenever I was on the phone with her because it's like, hello, what do you mean you listen to science? No, you don't. And if you don't, then you'll be voted out. But guess what? You're such a little pansy that you wait till your last year where you have no chance to be voted out to really like show your true color. So Fred Mills, you're a joke. You are an absolute joke. So I wanted to show you guys this. This is um, Oshner Health, which is the main um, like hospital network, I guess you would say, where they have like one of these in every like major city. And, I, you know, I did a quick little search on Google, you know, for somebody who says that this is not happening here. And it's such a small, you know, population of kids that, you know, I really didn't think it was fair to to uh, vote in, you know, against their interests if that's what they want to do. And their physician thinks that's right. Well, then why is Oshner Health promoting LGBTQ health care? For not only uh, men and women, but LGBTQ youth, pediatric gender affirming services. Um, he hello, Fred Mills. Fred Mills. That's weird. The multidisciplinary gender clinic involves medical and behavioral health professionals that work together to provide education, support, and create in individualized treatment plans for our patients and their families. Our medical provider is a pediatric endocrinologist who specializes in care for transgender and gender diverse youth. Wow. Amazing. So it doesn't happen here in the state, does it? Well, that's uh, not what Oshner has to say. And don't make me call them because I will. I will put them on speed dial, okay, and ask how I can trans my kid. And we'll see what they have to say if they provide these sorts of services or not. So, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, oh, and I did go to his uh, his little pharmacy there and um, posted all of my signs, uh, not only just on his pharmacy, but, like, around the, the area. So, I hope you got my messages, Fred. I hope everyone in the town of Parks, Louisiana got my messages and you guys are aware of who it is that y'all are allowing to give uh, pharmaceutical drugs to your, to your kids out there. And I hope you guys are more, um, you know, careful in the future because I wouldn't trust Fred Mills with my children or my own... Um, health so i i just just forewarning out there guys let me know what y'all think in the comments down below please like the video if you liked it give me a um a follow on twitter subscribe to my channel guys i would very much appreciate that and uh yeah until next time i will uh see you guys later and fred mills you can go to hell okay you be expecting to see me at one of your upcoming sessions sir because it will be on and popping okay uh, so yeah, guys, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something. Even this conversation alone can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you.